Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we saw how to configure a Flume agent to extract data from a web server log file. Now, let us move on to a bit more complex scenario and also one that has become very relevant for big data analytics. That is extracting tweets from Twitter into our Hadoop cluster. For this, our data flow of the Flume agent might look something like this. So we have users tweeting on Twitter which need to be extracted into HDFS, for which we will use a Flume agent. The tweets can be accessed using Twitter streaming API. Here, the source will be configured to access Twitter using the Twitter source class, which will consume the tweets as events and will then be buffered in a memory channel before forwarding them to an HDFS sync. With that information, let us go about configuring our agent before that, we have a couple of prerequisites to complete for this task. First, we need to have a Twitter account. You need to have an access token and API key to be able to authenticate and connect to Twitter and set up the Twitter stream. So if you do not have a Twitter account, create one at twitter.com. So once you have the account, go to dev.twitter.com and log in using that credentials. Now I have already logged in using my credentials. So I'll just go on to the icon on. So here it shows that you do not have any application. So go ahead and click on create new application. And then provide the application details. And provide the website details as well. Then just go ahead and click on yes I agree and then create your Twitter application. Your application is created successfully so go ahead and click on the API keys tabs so here you can see that you have the API key and the secret and you need an access token so you do not have an access token yet so go ahead and click on create my access token so give it a few seconds and then click on refresh to see your access token next we need to download a jar file which has a class called Twitter source right so this is going to be our source which will pull the tweets from Twitter's streaming API so you can download this jar file from the link that is provided here and then you can use winscp to copy that particular jar file into the flume slash lib directory there you go you have your access token created so you will need all this information when you are creating the configuration file. So now we have completed the prerequisites. So let us get down to configuring our Twitter agent. For that, like in our previous example, let us define the components of our agent. That is the source, channel and sync. So let us define our source first. So we will call it Twitter source and then the name of the agent as Twitter agent. Okay, next we will define the channel. So we'll give the name of the channel as mem channel, which is short for memory channel. And lastly, we will define our sync and name it as HDFS sync. Next, let us define the flow. That is basically join our source and the sync to the channel. First, let us join the source to the channel using this line. So here the Twitter source consumes the tweets as events and delivers them to the memory channel which is basically named as mem dash channel next let us join the sync and the channel here the sync hdfs sync is defined to drain the events that are buffered in the memory channel let us now configure the components individually first the source like we did previously we first need to define the type of the source. So here our source type is not out of the box, say something like an exec command or a syslog file. So we have to define that using the line below. So here we define our source type to be a Java class called Twitter source and is inside the Java package, which is com.cloudera.flume.source. Remember we downloaded a jar file and placed it in the lib folder? Well, the Twitter source class is in that jar file and that is being referred here. Next, in order to connect to Twitter, we need to use certain keys from your account. 
and we saw where we can get those keys on your Twitter page. Here you basically need the consumer key which is nothing but the API key on the applications page. Then you need the consumer secret which is the same as the API secret on that page and then you need the access token and finally the access token secret all of which are on the page of our sample application which we'll look at it real quickly. So here you go you have your API key, API secret, access token and the access token secret. And next you would also need the keywords based on which you want to extract the tweets. So here we have configured to extract tweets that contain the keywords Hadoop, Big Data, Analytics and you can have any number of keywords but they need to be comma separated. Now let us go ahead and configure our channel. At a minimum we will configure the type of our channel using this line and we have seen that previously. So here we are saying that the type of our channel is memory based. And next let us configure our sync. So firstly we'll set the type of the sync to be HDFS using this line and then we will set the path of our destination files and finally let us see the file type of our destination and that is set to be of type data stream. So with that we have configured at a minimum what is needed to extract tweets from Twitter. So you can always configure more properties to make your agent more efficient and get more tweets and all that right. So let us bring all of it together. So this is our configuration file. You just need to ensure that you replace your access keys with the appropriate values from your sample Twitter application. So next let us create a configuration file inside the con folder on our virtual machine. So let us go into the flume directory. So here we have our log to HDFS agent. So similarly, we'll create a Twitter agent configuration file. Here you can put in all the lines that you saw in the previous slide. Now let me go ahead and insert the configuration file contents and then save and close. All right, now let us run the agent. But remember, you need to be connected to the internet since you're downloading tweets from the Twitter website. So let us go ahead and type the command flume ng agent, which we have already seen previously, minus n, wherein it talks about the name of the Twitter agent or the flume agent that we want to run and then the path of the configuration file which is all right let's go ahead and hit enter and see what happens so as you can see it has started the HDFS sync and it has a memory channel and you can see that a lot of files are getting generated and being stored into HDFS as well so let us log in and see if the files are in fact getting stored into the directory we specified. So let us look at this folder fs minus ls and the path we gave was flume dash new dash tweets. So there you can see that there are a lot of files that have been generated. You can actually look at the contents of one of the file and see what is there in it. So you can see that the tweets are being generated but then the format is called as JSON. That's the format in which the data is being retrieved. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So you can see that the text attribute of the JSON object contains the actual tweet. So you can see that 
unfortunately some of them are in a language that we cannot recognize all right so you can see that tweets are actually being extracted from Twitter and then being stored on to our HDFS now the other thing that we notice here is that a lot of files are being generated but all of them are small files look at the sizes of these files 6000 bytes 5000 byte 4000 bytes so at a maximum we are looking at 2 to 4 KBs of files that are being loaded into HDFS but we already know that the problem is that Hadoop does not like lots of small files the reason is that since the HDFS metadata is kept in memory on the name node the more files you create the more RAM you will need to use and also from a MapReduce point of view tiny files lead to poor efficiency because usually each mapper is assigned a single block of a file as input so the time taken to start a mapper task itself might be disproportionately longer to the time taken to actually process the contents of such a small file obviously this is not efficient so ideally you would like your flume agent to write events into a bigger file or in some cases you might even want the flexibility to write to your sync based on the occurrence of either a particular number of events say every 10,000 events or maybe you want to write to your sync after a particular interval say every 15 minutes fortunately flume provides us with this flexibility so we can basically configure certain properties of our HDFS sync to decide on when the file will be written so let us take a look at some of those in case you want to assign a prefix to the file created in HDFS you can use the below property here the default prefix is basically flume data and we've already seen that when we listed the contents of our directory in HDFS in case you want to write events based on a time interval you then set the below property here the value is in seconds and the name of the property is HDFS dot roll interval so here the value is in seconds so if you do not want to roll the file to HDFS based on a time interval then you set the property value to 0 and by default the value is 30 seconds so every 30 seconds whatever is the contents of the HDFS sync will be then rolled over to a file on HDFS so you would have seen you know when the flume agent is actually running you would have seen that there has been a dot TMP file being generated and after some time you would have seen a log entry saying that the file has been renamed so this is what is happening now in case you want to write events based on the size of the file then you set the below property the value here is in bytes so if you do not want to roll the file to HDFS based on size then you set the property value to 0 and by default this property is set to 1 kilobyte and finally if you want to write based on the number of events you then set the below property which is the roll count so whatever value you set for roll count it will wait for that many events before the file is rolled off to the sync and by default the number of events is 10 and in case you do not want to roll off based on the roll count you set this property value to 0 now let us incorporate these properties to our configuration file and then see how our flume agent will work so for the sake of testing let us write to our HDFS sync based on the size of the file so I will be setting the role size property let's say to 2 MB or say 2097152 bytes and also let us prefix the file to say tweets and see if that actually works and while we are at it let's write the files to a different directory as well so we can compare so let us make a copy of the previous configuration file and update the properties we spoke about so let me stop the flume agent that's currently running let me make a copy of the current configuration file and then rename it to dash advanced conf
okay and let me edit this particular file and update the contents so here you can see that I have set the file prefix to tweets the role interval to zero meaning that the file will never be written based on a specific interval then I'm saying that the role size is 1 MB okay and the role count is zero indicating that the file will never be rolled off based on the number of events all right and then I have let me just update the directory as well advanced all right let me now save and close and then I am ready to run this agent only difference is that my configuration file has changed so now it has it's establishing the connection is the API keys that we generated right so it is still writing a lot of files let's take a look at what has happened now let me copy and paste the contents of the configuration file after making certain changes so let me go ahead and delete these first and then let me paste the new content so here you can see that I have given a file prefix of tweets and then roll interval to zero so roll interval basically again says that I'm not going to roll off my file based on a particular interval we have set the roll size to 1 MB and then the roll count to 0 and uh, we have also created a new directory for this tweets alright so let me just go ahead and save and close and let me run our agent so I'm just gonna type in flume dash ng agent minus n the name of the agent remains the same and then the configuration file changes and it is and let me now run the agent okay it's already connected to Twitter so you can see this login trees here and now you can see that it has created one HDFS file and it has given the suffix as dot TMP and the prefix as tweets like we expected but then one thing you would have noticed is that unlike previously it is not creating files in a very quick manner which indicates that it is actually waiting for the size of the file to be 1 MB which is what we have configured in the configuration file we can also take a look at our HDFS so let me just type in Hadoop FS minus less flume dash new dash advanced so there you can see few files and you can see that the size of each file at the minimum is 1 MB right the way you should write to HDFS is that the size of the file must at least be the default block size of your HDFS which in most cases is 64 MB similarly you can play around with the other properties to your advantage so with that we come to the end of this video we covered in detail how to configure a flume agent to extract tweets from Twitter thank you for watching